Speaking of Billy Walker, I just happen to have on the air with me, through the miracle of Alpha Electronics, Mr. Billy Walker. How are you, Billy? I'm doing fine. How are you today? Well, good, good, good. This is Jeff Page. with the Yeah, Jeff. How are you getting along? Classic country caravan, and uh, we are just thrilled to death that you're going to be visiting our Fair Valley here soon. Hey, yeah, I'm looking forward to being back in Kalispell. When were you here last? Do you remember? Well, it's been about uh, a year, a year and a half ago. I was out there with uh, uh, Impact America. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, uh, what can we expect up there on the hill at the Christian Center uh, come Thursday? Well, we're going to do uh, actually a kind of a two-part concert. The first part is uh, singing these songs that's made us popular, Funny Out Time Slips Away, Charlie Shoes. Cross the Brazos at Waco, Sing Me a Love Song to Baby, Word Game, She Goes Walking Through My Mind, Smoky Places, When a Man Loves a Woman, a uh, bunch of those songs. And then uh, we're going to take a, 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 a little break for a minute there, and w then we're going to come back and do uh, a whole set of uh, great gospel songs uh, and just share a little about you know what the Lord's doing in their life. Well, you know, I was so happy to see you start doing those gospel songs. Gospel is so close to country, and, you know, so many of the famous country artists got their start singing in, uh, singing in church. Well, what I really, I got influenced by, you know, uh, I, when we lived in West Texas and eastern New Mexico, there wasn't any entertainment except what we had with the church, and you'd go out there and they called them all day singing and dinner on the ground, and uh, that's really kind of what it was, and... Uh, you got a chance to sing, and that's where I really learned how to, uh, or what I wanted to do. Well, you know, you have such a long and uh, colorful career. What have you got? You've got something like 33 top 10 hits? Yeah, uh, something like that. Uh, well, actually, it's kind of according to about which magazine you go by, <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> and some of them are not even in existence anymore. That was you know, the number one magazines of the day. <laughs> Everything changes, you know. Well, but you know. Uh, we've had about, uh, all in all, we've had about 100 short records, and then we've had uh, actually 34 by some magazines in the top 10. Well, you know, your career goes back a long way. You started, what, uh, about the late 40s, didn't you? Well, yeah, uh, I started, old Hank Thompson helped me get a record contract in 1949, so I've been at this business quite a long time. And uh, automatically, people are going to start adding up and say, well, how old is this guy anyway? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, so uh, uh, I started making records for Capitol, and then a couple of later, uh, years later, I started recording for Columbia, and I was with them for a long, long time. Now, Actually, all in all, I've, I've recorded 30 years for major record labels, RCA, MGM, Monument, Columbia, and Capitol. Back in the late 40s, you were with the Big D Jamboree down there in Dallas, weren't you? Yeah, uh-huh. That's long, kind of what I started off on. How long did you spend there at Dallas? Well, I probably about a year, something like that. And then you went over to KWKH there in uh, Shreveport. For the well, day. actually, I did about a year and a half stint between uh, 1951 and uh, up until July 52. I had a... a, a a 16 station hookup, a radio uh, station network hookup for a, a product called Had a Call, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, out of Wichita Falls, Texas, their flagship station. So I moved up there to do that, and it it got uh, very popular for uh, in, in about a seven or eight uh, state range there. And then you went from there to Shreveport? Yeah, I joined the Hayride back in July 1952. You know, I've often thought that the uh, early 50s on the Hayride must have been an exciting time. Well, it really was. Uh, me and Webb Pierce and Farron Young and Red Savine and Slim Whitman and uh, Jimmy Newman uh, uh, and Lefty Frizzell would come by there and visit with us and George Jones. And we pr had a pretty exciting show. And then in 1954, I helped Elvis Presley get a job on that thing. Oh, you did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the hayride at that time was just about as big as uh, as the Grand Ole Opry, wasn't it? Well, yeah, we had an auditorium, we had a 5,000-seat auditorium, and we were filling it up every Saturday night. What we had, uh, we had two 50,000-watt stations that would simulcast the the Louisiana hayride, one out of uh, uh, 
Little Rock, Arkansas, and then the KWKH there, and so they were beamed in different directions. So, man, we covered a lot of territory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you went from the Hayride. Uh, you were on the Ozark Jub- Jubilee for quite some time too, weren't you? Well, yeah. Uh, I l- I left uh, the Hayride uh, in November of 1955 and started working with Red Foley and uh, Porter Wagner and Leroy Van Dyke and uh, uh, Wanda Jackson and this whole bunch of us started uh, on television uh, with ABC Network uh, out of Springfield, Missouri, and I worked that for about four years with Red Foley. Mm-hmm. He, I understand he was quite a man. Well, yeah, he was. He, he really taught me a lot about the uh, entertainment business. You know, anybody can be a singer, but you have to learn to be an entertainer, and so he taught me a lot about how to work the stage. And very patient man, a lot of uh, uh, he could watch your act and then come and tell you in a nice way, Billy, you should be doing this. And so I really learned a whole lot from him. It's always good to have somebody like that around, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a good teacher. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, uh, you in nineteen what fifty nine or sixty joined the well, Opry? Yeah, I joined the Grand Ole Opry the first day of nineteen sixty. Uh, I went back in in, in uh, most of 59, and I had a Western band out of Texas, and uh, we were just working all the time. And uh, I, uh, old Randy Hughes, uh, who became my manager and was also Patsy Klein's manager, uh, kept encouraging me, Billy, you know you're not making the money that you should be making with these records and uh, working anywhere except out of Nashville, and so on November the fifteenth, nineteen fifty-nine, he encouraged. He got me a, a a spot on the network, and I came over here. and Odd Divine offered me a, a a spot on the Grand Ole Opry as a regular member, and so I said, "Yeah, man," because <laughs> I was tired of playing every dance hall there was in Texas, <laughs> and uh, so I told the boys uh, on New Year's Eve. Uh, we played a big uh, dance there in uh, in in Fort Worth, and I said, "Boys, I'm going to go to Nashville and be a three chord buckaroo. Look out, world!" <laughs> and so I started the next day. I drove all night that night and the next day to get in here to Nashville to uh, be on the uh, Grand Ole Opry on the first day of 1960. Well, you know, you know, uh, music has changed considerable since then, hasn't oh, it? Oh, very, very, very much. And I was watching the uh, Opry last night, you know, Billy, and uh, they yeah, introduced uh, uh, Mattel's line of Country Rose Barbies. Have you got yours yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make a copy. <laughs> I don't think it needs to be It certainly has though. changed a lot, hasn't it, over the years? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, We're into merchandising instead of singing now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I noticed... Uh, I was reading a little thing yesterday that said uh, in 1996, uh, country music sales throughout the country diminished by 10%, and they're holding about that rate uh, this year, too. Do you think this is a signals a trend? Do you think people are getting a little tired of this new country? Oh, uh, well, I don't know, you know, if the 13s and 14-year-olds are not out there, but I know I I can't identify these guys anymore. I know. They all sound uh, just about the same, don't they? Country. It's like looking at new cars, you know, they all look the same. They're stamping out new artists every day. And and a guy can be number one on the hit parade, and I never heard of the guy. That's right. That's right. And all of a sudden, there's somebody else taking his place. And it's it's, uh, it's kind of frightening what happened. But I'm hoping that it'll get back to some semblance of where when a record starts off and a guy starts singing, you can tell who he is. You know who it is, the first few notes, right. Well, I tell you what, we really appreciate you and uh, some of the folks that are preserving the old uh, style of country. Well, I still like uh, the singing business. It's been really good to me, and uh, I'm just really looking forward to coming back to Kalispell. i got some friends out there I want to say hello to, and I know they'll be at the show, and I'm looking forward to singing all these country songs that we had on record and then singing some new songs to them also. I understand you're going to have to put up with Kelly Hartman up there, too. Well, well... (laughs) You know, I recorded one of Kelly's songs, and he's going to come on there and sing it himself. Well, we're looking forward to that. Thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate uh, talking to you today, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in person. Well, thank you so much, Billy. All right, buddy. All right, bye. Bye Bye-bye.
Sometimes I walk through the valley of shadows My feet get weary and warm At times I am faced with a wilderness feeling With pain I weather the storm Thank God I don't have to stay in the valley With joy he takes hold of my hand And lifts me up to be in his presence And I'm back on the mountain again I'm back on top of the mountain caught up in the glory with him delivered from past tribulation I'm back on the mountain again At the age of 15, I gave my heart to Jesus Or at least, I thought I did Only to be told by my father Boy, that guitar will send you straight to hell Still, I set out to fulfill my dream of becoming a country music star and left God out of my life for a lot of years. Through much pain and heartache, I surrendered my whole heart to Jesus and he's lifted me as high as any man can be. As I look at the ones who have gone on before me, like me they go through it again for his love never fades when you're down in the valley he'll put you back on the mountain again I'm back on top of the mountain I'm back on the mountain again Delivered from past tribulation I'm back on the mountain Back on the mountain I'm back